Catherine, um, has your practice changed over the last several years? Well, yes, Greg, it has. Um, in the last few years, we have, or well, I have personally changed the way I teach in literacy, especially in reading and writing. Um, very different, I think, to how we, we were teaching many years ago. Our so what, what's the difference? Yeah. I think we teach now with greater focus, and I think that's come about through some of the initiatives. So in my teaching, we use learning intentions and success criteria, and I find that that really focuses in and drills down on what we need to teach explicitly and otherwise, and it also gives the children the opportunity to know exactly what it is they need to know and what they need to do. Also, um, we do a lot of collaborative planning, something that in the past we probably didn't do as much, um, particularly here at St Oliver's because we are staged. So I work with the Year One teacher, but we also have other people in our team as well, including our learning support teachers who come in and work with the children as well. So they are all part of that collaborative process. Um, which is really fantastic for the children because it means many eyes on the children, not just one set. How would you describe that sort of practice? You know, there's so many ways of talking about being a teacher today and a guide and a facilitator. For you, how do you describe it? I think I have many roles, really. I think I can be the instigator, I can be the manipulator, uh, sometimes the leader and sometimes I follow along. It really does depend on what my focus is and what I want the children to be able to do. And also um, giving them a voice as well. And I think through the learning intention and success criteria, we do give them a voice because the work we do is, the, learn, the success criteria rather, is um, co-constructed. So the children do have a voice in that. What brought about this, this change? Well, it's been coming for a little while. I think with um, Focus 160, we really drilled down to what's important in literacy. We started to think about, well, what are the many elements that we need to make a really rich um, literacy program? So I think that gave us a framework. I think the fact that also on the, um, in the framework as well, there were very clear guidelines as to what each element was, what guided reading is, what uh, modelled writing is. So I think it was very clear um, what we were expected to do and what we need the children to be able to do. I think with that came benchmarks as well, which were great guides to help us know where we need to be with our children. You mentioned the collaboration. Mm -hmm. that, that wasn't normal in your first teaching, now you've made it central to it. Yeah, I think it's collaborative now in the sense that we all have a shared um, understanding of our children and that we all have shared wisdom, that I can learn from my peers um, and that they too have knowledge of the children and they have knowledge of their craft, so they can help me with that. So that collaboration I find is really important because I think that helps me to be directed, I think it keeps me honest in my teaching and also it's a way of me learning as well. Yeah. You don't find it threatening or <laughs> I think probably initially it was a little bit threatening, but I think over time you come to realise that it's all very secure and everybody's there for the same purpose. And I think it's, it's all about the learning. For me, that's central. It's about the learning. If the children are, if I'm seeing progress, if I'm seeing great outcomes coming from what I do, then I'm willing to take it on. Yeah. You mentioned student voice, and I think that's critical. That's one thing we're really coming to understand, student agency and voice. What difference do you think that's made to the kids' approach to their learning? Oh, I think it's a very powerful one, because I think when the children are co-constructing success criteria with you and they feel that they have an active part in the learning process, they are so much more empowered when they do write and when they do engage in the writing process. When they edit, they know what it is they need to do. When they are receiving feedback from peers or from a teacher, they know about what it is that they need to know and what they need to work on further, what are their challenges. So I think um, that has been a very, very powerful tool. If you had the opportunity to change anything <laughs> that, that we do in your daily working life, what would you, what would you um, choose to do? 
Oh, that's a hard one. <laughs> I think, I don't know that I would change anything at the moment. I think at the present time, I feel very um, empowered in what I teach. I feel really that the children are engaged and excited about their learning. Um, I think through the little initiatives that we've introduced in our writing, things like having an Ignite, um, having a celebration at the end sometimes with our writing, um, I think all those things are wonderful and I can see great benefit and I think it's improving the learner outcomes. So I don't know at this present time that I would change anything. I think we just keep on doing what we're doing, maybe refine and hone in what we're, and we're doing a little bit more. Focus and precision. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks very much. <laughs> Thank you, Greg.